Now to the California drought. Scientists say the long-awaited El Nino weather pattern is finally arriving in the Pacific. But can it keep the state from completely drying up? Brian Walsh covered environmental stories for Time magazine. He's now their foreign editor. Brian, good morning. Good morning. I think El Nino is one of those terms that you hear people say, but people don't actually know what it references. So what is the basic definition? So it's a periodic weather pattern, and, and what it means is that you have above average temperatures in the equatorial Pacific. That then creates a lot of additional energy that gets transformed into the atmosphere, and that ends up changing sort of trade wind patterns that go all around the, the, the globe, and that ends up then affecting weather patterns really on every spot, spot of the planet. There are a lot of wild, wild cards in the forecast for this, though, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at this point, scientists know it's happening. It sort of it has an official category, but they don't know how long it'll last. They don't know how strong it'll be, and that makes a big difference in terms of what actually happens in terms of weather. Everybody's talking about what's happening on the other coast. California's been in drought now for, what, like four years? Mm -hmm. Do you think that El Nino could bring some well-needed water to them? It could. If we're talking about a strong, lasting El Nino that continues on into maybe even next year, you will likely see larger than normal amounts of rainfall in northern California and other parts of the state, usually in the fall and the winter, usually when it's rainier there. So that's, that's definitely a, a positive thing for California. But, you know, to get out of a drought of this magnitude, which might be the worst in over a 1,000 years, you're going to need years and years of, you know, twice normal rainfall, three times normal rainfall, and one El Nino probably won't be enough to do it. All right, well, that, I mean, that was my next question, which is, you know, if El Nino isn't enough, I mean, what does California do? Well, beyond just hoping for additional rainfall, you know, you really need to work on how you efficiently you're actually using your water. Uh, you know, you can try to deal better with irrigation. You can think about how to use groundwater. You can think about how you use water on lawns. And, and you know, the state's taking some steps to that, but you know, you're really facing a situation where you have the biggest state in the entire country facing very strict water standards, and that's going to be very hard going forward. What do you say to someone who says, this doesn't really affect me? I sh why should I care about El Nino? Why is it important that we understand what's happening? Well, just in terms of the effect it will have on the drought, I mean, yes, Californians obviously are very affected by that. But, of course, 80% of that water goes to agriculture, and that then feeds food that goes around the country. So what's happening in California in terms of its water, in terms of its farming, is going to be felt by every person in America. Do you think the 25% uh, limit in California, the 25% reduction in mandated water use, is, is going to be enough? It won't be enough by itself, and it's actually proving very difficult to actually implement on itself. But as I said, you know, that, that was just affecting water used by houses, used by businesses. It's really water used by farming that needs to be dealt with, and that's just going to be very hard going forward because California has a lot of great things about farming, great weather and so forth. What it doesn't have is a whole lot of water. Right. All right. Brian Walsh, thank you very much. We're hoping for a strong El Nino.